Hello everyone, big weekend of racing across the country. Five Group 1s up in Sydney. We also have the William Reed at Mooney Valley. Cannot wait to sink our teeth into what is terrific racing. Joined by the very best in the business, BZ, Matt Hill and Esty. Welcome boys. It's great to be here Lizzie and it's great to have Matty Hill back after a week off last week. But uh, Mooney Valley on the weekend looks a cracker with looks, Imperatories oh. looking to go uh, to keep her unbeaten run at that uh, tight turning track. And just to add a little bit of a mystique, drawn a wide gate uh, as well around Mooney Valley, so can't wait for the William Reed. The undercard's fantastic too with the Alexandra Sunline and the uh, Alistair Clark, so looking forward to it. Yeah, massive weekend obviously in Sydney as well. Five Group 1's headlined by the Golden Slipper. It is probably a clash for the ages with uh, a few of the contenders, but more notably Storm Boy and of course Switzerland. If you've got a little bit of love for racing, we down in your little veins there, people. <laughs> You're not going to sleep tonight. Your head's absolutely going to blow off tomorrow because... Five Group 1s at Rose Hill, the William Reed at Mooney Valley, six Group 1s, it just doesn't get any better this weekend. The Golden Slipper, the need for speed, you're going to get that with all the two-year-olds trying to run as fast as they can for as long as they can, and we're going to talk about it all on Get On Extra. Yeah, we are. You sound and very I, excited. And yeah, and I noticed that you're sort of getting fit. You're going to start riding again? Yes, that... I will, yeah. We're, we're maybe talk about that a little bit later, <laughs> but you've got some more. Left your colours on? <laughs> yes. yes. Well, yes. I just went for the safari look like yourself and Maddie. Hey, yes. Zari <laughs> Oh, what up, bro? Yeah. <laughs> when you got to tip horses in the morning and be at Australia Zoo in the afternoon, well done, boys. <laughs> oh. oh, that was good from you. <laughs> well, someone who didn't have maybe um, the best weekend, I suppose, was Craig Williams last weekend, did he? Well, you know, you're watching the football last night. AFL football was at its brilliant best. Craig Williams has been in the news in racing with his ride on um, Mr. Brightside. And, but I'll tell you who summed it up beautifully last night after kicking kicking one from the boundary. Was he in the boundary line or was he out of the boundary line? Was he in the Monash car park? Jack Higgins summed them up beautifully. Have a look. I felt like um, Craig Williams. I was in the Monash Uni car park at Caulfield, so no, it wasn't bad, so I'll take it. I like kicking cheesy, cheesy goals against Collingwood. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's copying some unfair criticism, Craig. Gee, you can't do anything at the moment. So poor old Craig just sat back watching a nice uh, game of footy with the family and cops are whack for doing nothing. <laughs> well, hey, it's a beautiful... Was it in or out? It was out. Come on, man. Oh, he had his that. foot in the boundary line. The ball was still in midair. It was a magnificent goal either way. And you know the beautiful part about it? <laughs> Collingwood got beat. <laughs> <laughs> right, on that note, it's time for early cash. We're trying to find it's our best rooster. bets to build a bag for what is a fantastic... Fantastic day of racing, and it looks as though we're going head to head with Maddie, the three of us against Maddie, oh, because we're all on Marquez in the first race. I mean, yes. his couple of runs, this preparation in, in listed company, has got to be good enough for this race. Yeah, we don't get any earlier than this. Race one, number one. This is when we get our early cash at the Valley on Saturday. Draws barrier one as well. Should go straight to the front. It'll be in a prominent position. Looks well placed here, Simon. Back us up. What do you like about Marquez? We stirred up, back in grade. And you know what? The rail's in the true position. We're going to be on a good four. And if it's lightning on the fence, guess where he's going to be? Up in front on the fence. And guess who uses the claim, claim beautifully? Celine, if you know what I mean, Gaudry. Yeah, and well, isn't she riding well? Look, I don't think I can add much more than that. Race one, number one. But we do have someone who is against us in the yes, same I mean, race. I think Aristonis is going to be strong at the end of 2000. Chased another Will and Fist of Fury. Another Will, you mentioned the listed form of uh, the favourite. Well, another Will will be winning better races than listed races. Fist of Fury went on to win at Caulfield. Um, no, I like Aristonis. Fitter, deeper in a preparation and should run over the top of them. Oh, oh <laughs> it's on in the wrong. first. Let's have a look and reset for what is a great day of racing at the Valley. As Maddie mentioned, there's some terrific undercards, but the William Reed is one of the features. We're going to see Imperatrice back on her favourite track. You've got a couple of bets that you're really keen on. Uh, Frigid, who resumes this preparation, put a tidy little record together last Absolutely. prep. Absolutely. It's trolled up really well, and the thing I like about Frigid in this race is it's drawn well. Big key about Mooney Valley is where you draw, and I think Frigid's going to get the right run, and uh, this horse is uh, knocking on the door early in its preparation. Yeah, I tend to agree with you, Matty. I thought it'd be very hard to beat. There was another horse in the race that I didn't mind at a price in Rio, who just had no luck from a wide draw at Flemington last time out, but I'll be having something on Frigid as well. I think it uh, looks well placed from that. Whacking Hill Rip, if you're looking for your multiples there, I think he gets the best run in the race, but um, can I go to race five at Mooney Valley? Yes, the sunlight. Wow. 
Campy and Nessa beat the boys in the Peter Young. She's magnificent, this horse, and I'm telling you now that she goes back to fillies and mares. She's $3.30, ladies and gentlemen, which is a very handy price if you're asking me. She's a Group 2 winner in New Zealand. 28 days fresh, Gate 1, Opie Bossom. He'll just push him out on the bend. Campy and Nessa, the favourite. Race 5, number 1 at Mooney Valleys. One of my better bets for the day. That's a really interesting race because Roll on High is the horse on the way up. Is there any chance Roll on High could start favourite in that? Uh, look I don't know if it'll start favourite, but I think it'll be popular. And I think the other horse that'll be popular there is Wishlaw Lash. She looks the obvious leader. I think she was just a little underdone first up at Flemington. I think she'll be much better at Mooney Valley. She was fresh, over raced a bit. Yeah, she did. Mm. The Alexandra Stakes is another interesting contest because we get to see Molly Nickers, who has been pretty good in two yes. runs. She looks, she should have probably won last time out. She's run really well in a vanity, really well in a CUNY. Surely this is the race for yeah, her. I think she was a victim of. Um, ben Mellum just being outridden at a key stage by Mark Zara last time out when Autumn Angel was able to sort of come from behind her, whip around, put her in a pocket. And I think she, if she gets the clear running this weekend and she has momentum to build at the right stage, I think she deserves to be favourite one of the better bets on the program at Mooney Valley. Yeah, I agree. I think with the speed in the race, it's been knocked about with scratchings a little. Vibrant Sun goes forward. Grinzinger Bell, as we know, goes forward. Sox Nation will want to be up there. So they'll get along a bit and Molly Nickers will be in the right spot. We'll probably have to stave off Vivier. They're electing to come to Melbourne instead of Adelaide, but she'll be strong late. Yeah, Molly I'm Nickers. with her as she, well. She's drawn the right barrier. She's a big girl with a big action, so she'll need to stay off the paint and not get blocked in like yep. she did at Flemington, which we didn't think she would. So she'll get the room to gallop there if she thinks she's the best horse. She'll get her chance. What about the William Reed? Of course, we see Imperatures back at her favourite track. She's trying to go for back-to-back -back William Reeds. How do you think that this speed map's going to play out for her, Resty? Absolutely beautifully, as a matter of fact, because she's drawn out a little bit, the champ. Now, we know she can jump and be right on speed and be on a lead if she wants to, but she's best when she's sitting back just stalking, stalking the speed at about one to two pairs back. And what I think here is with a hypothetical Queen of the Ball joined Q-Man in the lead. So genuine tempo going to that first bend at Mooney Valley from the 1200 metre run. She's got the astrologist drawn out with her. She can just follow him across. He'll sit and annoy that speed. So there's four horses on the lead. She'll be just sitting back there, three wide, with a little bit of cover, with the hardest to beat back on her left shoulder, Bella Nipotina and I am me. Yeah. And Opie Boston will be sitting there. He'll have lipstick on both ears. He'll be smiling that much <laughs> when he comes to the 400 metre mark. And he'll just go, see you later. <laughs> and she'll be undefeated at Mooney Valley. Right, and you agree? It's hard, geez, it's hard to beat that, isn't no. it? What an, what an appraisal. I mean... I think uh, good horses still negate wide gates, don't they? And uh, I th she's the best on paper. She's just the best. And we've seen how versatile she can be. Like, I don't think anyone expected in the Manicato Stakes on Cox Plate Day last year that she'd be in front. Mm. Um, Opie Blossom has shown that if he wants the chance, his arm, he can, he can go forward. And I think the only query with her is if we get to Mooney Valley and buy race number eight on the card, it's dynamite leaders and they're all winning on the fence. You might get a little bit of a better price, but I don't think it's going to necessarily take away from her chance. The horse that beat a cylinder in the new market was handicapped conditions. Yes. He's got to go yeah. up six kilos Correct. and Correct. he's drawn inside. Can he beat her again? Look, I don't think so at no. level weights. I, I, d I doubt that he no. can. And I'm not convinced barrier one's great for him because mm. I don't know if he's got enough speed to hold his position. And he could end up, say, like two or three pairs back on the fence, <clears> needing a lot of luck. In a 1,200 metre race, that's probably not the best place to be especially if you're not following horses who are the main chances in the race. And I think you might get that slingshot theory sort of coming around the, the bend. The only query I've got is Imperatrice was so brave in the new market when it was 40 yeah. degrees and she's pulled up with EIPH. Yeah, I agree. And I'm thinking, could she just be flattened by that? Yeah. But and they she, wouldn't run her if she was. No, but I think you're back you could, in. Could, yeah, you're back you, in. You can never, and sometimes you can't actually even tell until you put that race pressure on them whether they haven't, have recovered from that last start. I don't think she has to be at her best to beat this lot. Yeah. I think she's just proven she's, she's clearly proven. the best horse in this race. And I'm look, you're having to take a short quote, but um, if you had to give me $100 and I've got to spend it, it's having it straight on her. Yeah, if there's any chinks in her armour, I am me as the horse that will be able to pounce late, but I am with Imperatrice as well. Time for oh Shells on the Shelf. Well, people have had great weekends over the past uh, couple of weeks, none better than our own Maddie Hill. Oh. Take a look. Matt Hill commentating is the best thing I think that's happened to footy this year. Wow. And I think it's because, obviously, horse racing background. And when he's commentating, I feel like I'm at the pub, four beers deep, 
and he's calling my absolute donkey, sweeping from the outside, just catching the field and storming home to win. Yeah. On every play. I love him. McNeil's going to switch, and then it was smothered by Petrarca, who read it better to an open goal line. Over the head of Brown, beats Camus. Great gather. Open goal. Drilled it. Just genuine energy. Genuine energy. Knows his stuff. Yeah. Just gets me up and about. Just the way he speaks is just exciting. <laughs> Just you, makes you want to just go down to the pub and put oh. a few bets on. Obviously, with sports bet on your phone. Matt Hill, I don't care what you're commentating. Just give me it. I'll take a big ball of that stuff. Any other way. More passion. More passion. More, more energy. More, more energy. More energy. More energy. Footwork. Energy. Energy. Oh. Thank you very much, uh, Dan. I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what everyone's saying, Matty. You've been absolutely terrific. Time for a break. On the other side, we're going to preview what is a bumper day in Sydney. My Saturday best in Fist of Fury. I'm also with Fist of Fury as well. Fist of Fury comes clear. Fist of Fury won it. Naval Trader, race three, number five. Naval Trader in front. The favourite will get it done. Naval Trader one. Seven, number four, waltz on by. Waltz on by. Waltz on by. Too good. You got to is all the rage in the Coolmore Classic. I'm with her. The best horse in the race from an inside barrier. James McDonald, no dead weight. Zoo gotcha. I just kept coming back to the favourite. Zoo gotcha near the inside of Samana. Zoo gotcha. Zoo gotcha got the Coolmore. So race eight, number eight, Shadow of Love. Shadows of Love in front, fighting the ball off, and Shadows of Love, she's a great mare, Shadows of Love won. Mr Hansel uh, from the Luke Oliver Yard, I think it'll be uh, very hard to beat. Mr Hansel, too nippy for them. Race four, number four, Holly Tycoon, through lack of opposition, she can win. Holly Tycoon with momentum, put her head in front. Holy Tycoon, Mott sends her home. Holy Tycoon, one of three. Beautiful. Well done, Steve. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think, think maybe Pride of Jenny got left out of there anyway. That's all right. Oh, it's okay. Well, yeah, it's very good. Oh. Yeah, is what it is, hey? Clip there. <laughs> 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 it's called whack. All right, well, it's a great weekend of racing in Sydney. It I'm is. very excited about, uh, obviously, the Golden Slipper, but not only the Golden Slipper, we've got the Ranbet, the Rosehill Guineas, the George Ryder. So much on offer, so hopefully we can find a few winners and... Let's kick things off with you, SD. You're Think with, uh, it over. Yeah. Uh, look, there's a lot of imports that are going to have their first up run here. And you know what? I don't know enough, uh, enough about them. And yeah, I agree. I, I just don't like guessing. <laughs> I think the wait for age horse here is think it over. He proved that he's back to his brilliant best with a tactical winning ride with Nashville Willer in the saddle last start. His third up victory last time in was the seven stakes and he beat a horse called Saki and Fangirl. So he only improves. Tactically, he's going to get the best run in the race. And I can understand why he's 270, but I believe uh, ZI, and you'll help us here with VR Sestina, uh, that we'll get a better price than 270 because I'll come for the Chris Waller mare. Uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what the market does. I'm not sure how to read that, but I thought she was the one to beat. She's got very strong form from the UK. She's first up out of quarantine. It's been a recipe that's worked with William Haggis and Chris Waller's trying to replicate that and I'm backing him to get it right with James McDonald in the saddle. I think she's uh, climatised well from what I've seen. I think she'll be too good for the local form. It, it, I, they're very, very good out of uh, quarantine and she's got, she has got the A-plus form from Europe. But it is, I do agree with SD, like it's so hard, isn't it? When you get these, you, wanna, you want to be able to bet on these races and you want to see the exposed form. And I just would like to see maybe, I don't know, a trial or Gallop. something more. Gallop uh, yeah. on the grass. Well, you see the gallops, but I mean, how can you yeah. sort of measure them up? I don't know, maybe... I do know that a lot of punters talk to me about this. This is a gripe that they have. We get these good races and then we get them stacked mm. with imports and we don't know how they're going. Mm. Realistically, a, they're probably going to be better. Of, that's part of the puzzle. And you get a price about it, you get a price about uh, well, think it over and you sort of got to work it out. And like, BZ's line is that William Haggis, has, that's been his formula, that's come over and, and done it. But she's first up for Walla, it's a new joint, Rose yeah, Hill. Yeah. I, I, don't know. I struggle with it. Look, I'm with I'm Military yeah. Mission because I know him and he ran really well first up. He gets Ooh. outside, think about it. The leader. I think he's a, um, a terrific little horse. He's would definitely going to improve fitness wise. So I'm uh, going the way of military mission because you know what? I know him. Oh. Yeah, and we know a couple of horses, Riff Rocket and also King Colorado, who are clashing in the Rose Hill Guineas. Riff Rocket is the favourite, and the wings. BZ and Simon. Well, I think both when Chris agrees. Wallace scratched militarised out of the race and he decided to go to the rider with him, he's his number one target, Riff Rocket. And Riff Rocket. He hit a flat spot second up, got two pairs further back at Flemington. 
after his brilliant first up win. I think the mile and a quarter is really going to suit him. And this race sets up ideal for Riff Rocket. From barrier eight, Nashville Willer will just be able to fit in mid-race. There'll be good genuine tempo in this. Tom Kitten's his hardest to beat. And Big Tom, who's got a big action, who found trouble last start, he's drawn barrier two, and I'm worried about him tactically if he gets caught up back in behind at the only danger to, I thought, Riff Rocket. I'm expecting him to bounce back, Riff Rocket. I think he's a very, very good horse, race six, number yeah, two. Yeah, I tend to agree with you, Simon. And I think his run in the Australian Guineas was outstanding. He just didn't get the circumstances to suit. It wasn't easy to make ground that day. It was sort of up and in, and you needed to be in the right spot. And he was only second up. You would like to think he improves third up to 2,000 metres, back to his home track at Rose Hill. I think he deserves to be the one to beat. Go your hardest with King Colorado. <laughs> yeah, I just can't see any speed in the race. That's what I, I mean, I know you said there was genuine tempo, but I'm not quite sure where it's coming from. I think Riff Rocket's going to be back along with Tom Kitten. I looked at King Colorado. Yes, he was, you know, he can, I think he can improve off of his last start performance. I just see him getting a really nice run and 2,000 metres just ticks a lot of boxes. Do you know the George Ryder, if you look through the honour roll of this race, it's one of the best races uh, in Australia all year. All of the good horses have won a George Ryder. Now, you've all got different horses here, so <laughs> give me your reason, Simon, militarise. Well, the favourites under a vet uh, check, a cloud, and not sure whether he's going to run, think about it at this stage. So, um, and, But he's drawn the car park as well. But I like the switch from Chris Waller going to 1,500 here, going away from the mile and a quarter to 1,500 here against the older horses with militarise. He's a gold Rose winner over 1400 metres and what I really like about him is that he's drawn barrier seven, J-Mac in the saddle. Um, he looked a little bit flat second up I thought after his brilliant win, uh, second to Fangirl first up. So Chris Wallace kept him sharp, he's kept him fresh and what I like about his, uh, his his, his map in this race is when you watch Joe Marira win on him three times, he's a horse that likes to just stalk one to two to three pairs back, hold hold to the 500 and watch him sprint. He needs to attack. He got exposed early and into a bump and jewel last start. Now, I don't think he likes it. He just likes to hunt late and if he's going to win, it'll be the last 50. Value from you, Lady Laguna. Yeah, Lady Laguna, last start, group one winner. I think she's, look, she, the map may not look great for her, but I think the key with her is that if you, it's not about getting cover, it's about holding her up until she has her last sprint. And then she's got a great turn of speed and she's just a mare in form. I love mares in form, but I do, I have a lot of respect for your on top selection. Yeah, I'm going with New Energy here, who I thought was terrific at its Australian debut over 1300 metres, really hit the line strongly. And I know it meets the horses that it took on that day a little bit worse at the weights, but I think the step up in trip, um, going to 1,500 metres, okay, from a wide draw, we'll just look for a little bit of cover, but I think at the price, $19, he's, he's worth a gamble. Yeah, he certainly is. He's a very nice horse. Well, the big one is the Golden Slipper and Gay Waterhouse. Well, she has pretty much a stranglehold on the whole race. She's got six in the field. She's got an emergency as well. So if he gains a run, uh, she might even have seven. Storm Boy's all the rage. But SD, what I want to know is how is this speed map going to play out for him? Because with Gay, with so many of those dominant on-speed horses... Is it really going to play into her favour as far as the favourite? Yeah, absolutely. I think past um, 10 victories in this Golden Slipper have drawn inside barriers, and that's the key. But you have a look at it. There's a battle for the speed. The first 300 metres will be very interesting. And you talk about straight charge from Waterhouse Stable Lady Camelot, second in the Blue Diamond, Shangri-La Express, their Storm Boy, fully lit. They all want to roll forward. And Gay's horses, you don't touch their mouth the first 300. You let them roll into the bridle, and then you sort it out. If I'm riding the favourite Storm Boy, Get him to begin as well as you can. Hold your posse early doors. Drift off the fence a little bit. Let fully let lead. And then put pressure on your right, your left shoulder for Shangri-La Express, Lady of Camelot, Holmes of Court, and also Straight Charge to make, to make them question and work that little bit more if they want to try and fit across. He's a big boy. He needs his galloping action. Only two things can beat. Storm Boy. If he misses the kick, gets shuffled back to three pairs back and can't get out, or if he gets locked away on the fence and he can't get out and get room to build. They're the only two things that I think can beat Sport Storm Boy. I didn't mind his first up when he raced a little fresh after uh, galloping that first 300 metres, and then once he got into a rhythm with a bit of juice in the track, he galloped out well. Yeah, he didn't hit his peak mark, which he did in the uh, Magic Means where he ran 1.8 and change, but he's ready to be primed for this big race. This is his grand final. He's a beast. And I think with Ryan Moore in the saddle, he'll be the one they have to beat. Yeah, I tend to agree. I think his last start is not a true reflection of his 
best form. It was just a stepping stone to yeah. get him ready for this race. They had to bring him back down after a Magic Millions performance, building back up, heading into his grand final of the slipper. Uh, I think he's set a very high benchmark as the leading two-year-old so far this year, and I don't think they can beat him. Yeah, uh, look, he does look very hard to beat, but I'm uh, going against him. I'm going with Switzerland. I just, I've been oh, with him right from on. the very start, and I just think that he's a horse that every time they raise the bar with him, he seems to be able to jump over it, and I'm just banking on him uh, being a very strong run, 1,200 metre race, and he's going to have the last crack at them. So uh, Switzerland for me, but really have a lot of healthy respect for Stallboy. If you're throwing any other horses into the multiples, Lady of Camelot is another one you have to have in the mix. So another group one uh, is the Galaxy, the Charge of the Light Brigade. Uh, always a really good race and always an open race too. And again, it's the wing, Simon and BZ. With yeah, I thought half cabin would be very hard to beat. Uh, handicap 1,100 metres. I think this is his chance to try and win a group one. Simon, what did you think? Well... If you get if you got more galloping room, last start he wins. But when you watch his three wins to date, which I went back and had a look at his profile, at the 400 metres he was out with space and he had room to gallop. That's what he needs in this race. And I think from barrier uh, eight with J Mac in the saddle, he three pairs back with a bit of cover will suit him. I love him at the 1100 metres. I've been waiting for him to reach a peak figure, and I reckon this is his time of the year after cabin. Uh, he drops three and a half kilos. He gets a beautiful run in the race with genuine speed in this and I think he's the horse to beat. I'm against you guys again. I'm either going to have a very good weekend or not. Sunshine in Paris, she's my best bet of the weekend. I know it's very hard to um, you know, you be confident in these big fields and group one races, but she is an absolute star. And we've only seen a limited um, amount of her because of injury. She's had the six starts, four wins, two minor placings, arguably a couple of those minor placings. She should have won them. I think she is Probably after Saturday, we'll be saying she's one of the best horses in New South Wales. Wow, -wee. there's a big push from Lizzie. I've got a big push in the last, Alentia. I thought this was a Saturday best at uh, Rose Hill in Sydney. Very good run first up. Save for this, up in trip. James McDonald in the saddle, hopefully too good. Yeah, hopefully. Stacks of winners there at Sydney in the weekend. And Maddie, what have you got for us this week no. from From the Hilltop? Oh, just, oh, oh just sorry. Hey, hey, Ascot, man. Well, you know, come on, man. Yeah, not yet. In. Yeah, no, we just we can we were able to sneak it in before we get to Maddie's Hilltops. Can I just give it to you quickly? Race, uh, race two, number five, Premium Girl. I think that uh, she's absolutely prime. She's in great order and she should have won her last four in a row. It's a okay. fair call from you. Space on that rundown. Look, there's nothing there. <laughs> right. You didn't write me Ascot, did No, you? because you didn't tell me. Well, production meeting. Now. <laughs> Okay, on to more important Well, things. haven't we covered some sport on From the Hilltops, but uh, we haven't seen this before. The Sheep Grand National. Oh, well, and oh. away they go. There's about seven obstacles to get over in a big field, a Grand National field too, as they come towards the first, the open ditch, and it's Red Rum out in front with Greyface not too far away. Look Yay! at this close-up yeah. camera. Magnificent stuff there from the team at ITV. They will follow next in the field by Stern Idol as they head towards the bottom corner. Over the last of the treble they go, and the front runner is Greyface in front by a couple of lengths to Red Rum. Then came Stern Idol and Crisp as they come around towards the final corner now. Stride for stride, these two here. Stern Idol and also Greyface. Greyface is holding on. I think Greyface is just going to last. Yes, Greyface oh, is last. Oh, Stern yeah. Idol and Red Rum in third. Ready, well done. Was that you in the saddle there, Lizzie? <laughs> oh, oh, Greyface oh, here, cool. getting ready for it. Time for a break. <laughs> <laughs> All right, time for back, second crack. Simon, you're up. Passive aggressive in the galaxy. I'm with New Energy. I was with Roll on High. Uh, it's got into a bit tight now. Oh, Three dollars fifty. But I'll give you another one. Into you in the Alistair Clark at twenty. Oh, yeah, I liked uh, Rio in race number four at the oh. Valley. All right, uh, what do we think? Can't osmosis win. in the galaxy. Um, I'm a little it. bit dubious about Schwartz's trials. Yeah, Grand Impact long and coming off a long spell. I'm taking on Spywire. Best bet of the weekend. Yes, Campion Essa, Moody Valley. Sunshine in Paris. Rigid for me. Yeah, Alencia in the last at uh, Rose Hill. Chris Waller and James McDonald. Knock, and now there's me a little uh, joke here. <laughs> knock, knock. Who's there? Who's there? A lady. A lady who? No need to yodel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got Thank you, Sam. Oh, the best show, you know. A lady. Thanks Episode for watching. 33. See you again next a week. A lady. <laughs> <laughs>